Shalom friends, welcome back to the Hebrew Revelation channel. I'm Chris Melnick. If you are watching this video, I assume you have seen one or more of the first four videos in the series about the book of Revelation. You likely have many questions. You may even have some concerns or fears. And there may be some of you who simply don't believe we could be near the end of time as we know it. I was in law enforcement for many years. I taught defense tactics before I started battling some health issues. A key part of what I taught had to do with handling fear. Let me teach you a few things about fear that may help you. Fear is all about perceptions, almost always wrong perceptions. There are three things I want you to know about perception. One, we act on what we think are facts. It's rare that when we react to a situation that we have all or even most of the pertinent facts. That is why it's important to study scriptures for yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand. 2. We seek facts to support our beliefs. Our beliefs almost always start out with an incomplete set of facts. What we believe to be facts are often inaccurate perceptions. It's normal to see things through a filter of what others have told us is truth. It's best, if we can, to take the time and search for as much information as possible before making any conclusion. We also should not be so dogmatic that we fail to look at new pieces of information. 3. Our perceptions dictate our attitude, which controls our behavior. If we are responding based upon inaccurate perceptions, our response often is fear. Thoughts dictated by perceptions from our flesh, the world, the adversary, often reflect negatively in our emotions. When we make decisions based upon emotions, whether they are positive or negative emotions, they often are poor decisions. I don't think it's a coincidence that in the past decade or two, the entertainment industry and literature has been saturated with vampires and zombies and the occult. Society has fed themselves and our children on a twisted perception of the supernatural. People have become desensitized to such things and yet they fear what the Bible says about the end times. I know this may sound harsh, but I say it in love. People don't want to admit it, but they fear what it says in the book of Revelation because at some level they see the truth in what it says. But most of us only see a portion of the truth. That is when fear finds an open door. The problem is that we all read the book of Revelation through a filtered lens of some kind. Even most believers read it through a lens that sees God as primarily wrathful. My prayer for you is that you are able to see God as loving and protective even in the midst of chaos. I want you to come to know Him as the Almighty One. I want you to trust in Him as the One who is able to rescue us from the trap of the hunter and the plague of calamities. The One who shelters us under His wing. The one whose truth is a shield and protection. I want you to have a relationship with him so you won't fear the terrors of night, or the arrows that fly by day, or the plague that roams in the dark, or the scourge that wreaks havoc at noon. I want you to be able to trust that his word is true when it says, A thousand may fall at your right side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it won't come near you. God gave us the emotion of fear for our good. Fear is the innate alarm response to a perceived danger. It was designed to keep us from harm. Fear is supposed to be a short-term response to danger, not a lifestyle. I want you to picture an inverted pyramid. When we don't know God or have a skewed view of Him, then God is toward the bottom of the pyramid. The lies of the enemy end up at the top. Fear appears greater than God and holds greater weight in our lives then. When we come to truly know and trust our loving God, then fear is at the bottom, where it belongs. Let me paraphrase what it says in 1 John 4. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear is suspicious that there is danger. But he who fears has not come to a mature knowledge of the love of God. If you were frightened by the videos, or you are uneasy about what your future may hold, let me give you some information to ease your mind. A fear response to Revelation is because one sees God as angry and vengeful. If we read the book of Revelation with that as a filter, then yes, it is frightening. Remember, the Bible tells us that perfect love casts out fear. The love of the one true God, Yoavah, is that perfect love. 
when you come to know his love, then the book of Revelation will no longer be a fearful thing. As I stated in the videos, God has not intended that we should experience his fury, but that we should gain deliverance through our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. God loves all of us, but he will not force us to accept his love. He took the first step, and he made a way for every person to have a relationship with him. It's like when a person is asked out on a date. We have to respond by saying yes or no. I know that there are many people today that distrust or even hate Christians. Some of this has been brought about by actions of people who call themselves Christians, and some of it is a lack of understanding what it is to be a true follower of Messiah Jesus. If you are one of those who has been wounded by Christians, I apologize. Don't let the human frailty of others rob you of the love that God has for you. Please understand that there are many that have trusted in Jesus but have never come to a mature knowledge of the loving God and His Word. The good news is that instead of man pursuing God through offerings, meditation, self-flagellation, or acts of good deeds, God came to pursue us with His love. The Bible tells us that there is only one way to heaven. Jesus said that He is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him. This relationship with God cannot be earned or deserved. Jesus already paid the price in full by His death on the cross. You owe nothing. The Bible tells us that we are saved by grace through trusting, and even this is not your accomplishment, but God's gift. Obtaining this relationship with God is very simple. First, ask yourself, am I a sinner? Well, have you lied, cheated, stolen, or hated another person? If so, then yes, you are a sinner. But you are not alone. Every person has sinned. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one is perfect, not even Christians. God is not looking for perfection in a person before we can have a relationship with Him. He simply wants us to acknowledge that we are sinners and to be sorry for our sins. In John 3, 3, Jesus was very clear when he said, Unless a person is born again from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He went on to say that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life, instead of being utterly destroyed. The way to be born again from above is this. The book of Romans tells us that, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall have eternal life. In other words, all you have to do is talk to God. Tell him that you acknowledge that you have sinned, and that you are sorry for those sins. Let him know that you are choosing to trust that the death of his son Jesus paid the full price for your sins, and that his resurrection from the dead paved the way for an eternal relationship with him. Then ask him to make you a new creation to fill you with His Spirit, and to come into your life to be Lord. And for those who have made that decision in the past to accept God's invitation, but you are still frightened by the thoughts of going through the tribulation, let me reassure you. Let me go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It says, We are the children of the day. Let us be vigilant in our minds, and put on the breastplate of faith and of love, and let us take the helmet of the hope of life, because God has not appointed us to wrath, but to the possession of life in our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. I know people don't want to hear it, but there is a very real possibility that believers will be here during at least part of the tribulation. In another video, I'll tell you why I believe that. If you disagree with me, that's alright. For now, at least hear what I have to say. If I'm correct, and we are here during the time of the Antichrist, it still does not change what it says in 1 Thessalonians or similar scriptures. Ideally, we would experience a pre-tribulation removal from earth so we don't have to be here during the revelation events. However, if we are still here during those events, then God still has not appointed us to wrath. It is possible to be present during an outpouring of wrath and not be subject to the wrath. Just like one could be present in court during a sentencing, and not be the person being sentenced. If you are fearful, I want you to know that if you are trusting in Yeshua as your Redeemer, then there is no need to be afraid. God is good. He's capable of, and in fact still does miracles. God is more than capable of sustaining us through such times. It will require that we be vigilant, 
have faith and love, and maintain the hope of life. Now is the time to prepare for the possibility of events to come. First of all, pray. Talk with the Father. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the heart of the Father to you. When you pray, listen to what the Holy Spirit says to you. You also need to read and study your Bible. It's time to quit blindly trusting churches and religious representatives and what they tell us. You need to spend time with God and in His Word. You need to take the responsibility for knowing what His Word says. Don't rely on the interpretation of others. As you read, notice that any place you read, there are stories about God's goodness and love towards those who seek Him. And you will find that where it describes dire consequences for turning away from God, it often gives a promise of a way out for those who turn to Him. I want to point out what it says at the beginning of Revelation. Jesus said, Blessed is the one who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things that are written in it, for the time is near. What it says in the book of Revelation is meant to bless us. It will only bring fear when we lack in our understanding and trust of God. Our Father God truly does love you. Choose to seek Him and see Him as the loving God that He is. The intent of these videos is not to scare you, but to teach you, to encourage you, and to equip you to boldly face the prophetic events that may soon come. I pray over you what Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, that the God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the Father of glory, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation with His knowledge, and that the eyes of your hearts would be enlightened, that you would know what is the hope of His calling and what is the wealth of the glory of his inheritance. Be bold, be strong, my friends. Blessings and shalom to you. I trust you enjoyed and been blessed by this message. We hope to release more videos on other topics, at least monthly. To make sure you don't miss videos when they are released, hit the subscribe button now. Also, you'll find us on Facebook at Hebrew Revelation. Be sure to follow and like us on both locations. Blessings, my friends.